you and uh, Tom Brady both used to make headlines because he would say things like, I want to play till I'm 45, and, and it used to seem like a wild idea. How how cool is it to be in a game like this? It's going to be the first time two 40-year-olds have ever started a football game, and, and you guys are both still playing at a high level. Well, it makes me it makes me remember back to 1999 when we played against each other in college. The Boilermakers traveled up to the big house. Um, unfortunately, that one didn't end too well for us, but um, I think uh, little did we know we would we would have the opportunities that we we've had um, in the NFL. Um, I'm sure I speak for both of us when when I say that you know I kind of I think we are, we both pinch ourselves um, the blessing and the opportunity to be able to play this long and you know, played for so many great teams and with so many great players. And how much more do you want to make sure you come out on top on this one now that he's actually a division rival? Yeah, listen, I, I got a ton of respect for Tom and all that he's accomplished in his career. I know, um, I'm sure he's pretty rejuvenated, you know, being down there and um, having the opportunity with the new team. And obviously he's got a great team around him, a lot of great uh, skill position players and um, a really good defense as well. So. Um, man, they're in the division now, so you know we're both fighting for the same thing. Next one's from Jonathan Alexander. Hey, Drew. Um, my name's Jonathan Alexander. I write for the Charlotte Observer. I hope you're doing well. Good. Um, I'm writing a story on my former teammate Teddy Bridgewater, and um, he specifically spoke about yeah you know, his journey in being a starter, first time starting the season opener in five years. And he specifically talked about you know coming in relief of you and uh, struggling that first game against the Rams when you got injured. And uh, he was he felt like he was trying too much to be like you. And he had to kind of learn to be like himself. And that helped him. Do you remember any conversations you had with him during that time um, when he started to get on a roll? And, and what do you think about you know where he is today? Yeah, um, first off, I'm so happy for Teddy. You know, when you look at his journey, um, you know, obviously with his injury in uh, Minnesota, when um, you know he had really established himself as the starter and a leader on that team and really a great player, and, and they had kind of gotten that team into a position where they were ready to make a run. And then, you know, tragically he, he suffers that knee injury that, that sidelines him for a while. And so I know psychologically coming off an injury like that, you know, there's always kind of that that psychological barrier as much as there is the physical barrier. And so. Um, you know, when he when he came down here, I think the thing that you realize right away is, man, Teddy is a highly intelligent guy who loves a game of football, and he he has a presence about him, you know, and an ability to lead guys. You know, guys respond to him, guys follow him, and um, you know, I think each quarterback has their own style, you know, and so I think coming into this offense, you know, where listen, this offense has been one that has been evolving over the last you know, going on 15 years now. You know, Sean came here in 2006. He brought me in as one of his first free agent guys. And ever since then, we've just been building this offense and, and evolving each and every year. And so for somebody to come in and all of a sudden have to grasp, you know, the wealth of information in this in this offense is, is difficult, you know. Um, but, man, I thought Teddy was so steady um, and while he was here. And, and it was weird for me when I got injured because, first off, that, that was the first time I had ever – gotten injured to where I would be missing any type of significant time in my entire career. And for the first part of that, I was actually away from the team for like a week, you know, getting surgery and couldn't travel and all that stuff. So when I got back, you know, it was kind of like, um, uh, I think, I think I was there at that point to support Teddy in whatever way I could. Um, you know, so the roles reversed there for, for a period of time, you know? Um, so I wanted to support him. I wanted to do whatever, uh, you know, it, it, I can remember a couple of moments in practice where, you know, we would be installing a new concept and, you know, maybe the receivers didn't run it quite the way we had talked about in the quarterback meeting. And so I would look at Teddy and be like, hey, I'll, I'll go talk to, you know, I'll go talk to Mike, you go talk to Jared, you know. And so we would tag team, you know, just to get guys on the same page to teach them how we would see it, right, as QBs. And so, you know, we still had to be very much on the same page so that I could make sure I was coaching it the way that he – he saw it or the way that he wanted it because he was in there as the starter at that time. So, man, always a team effort, you know, with, you know, the one and two quarterback. Um, and, man, I, I tried to support him as much as I could during that time, just like he always supported me um, when the roles were reversed. 
Um, and at the end of the day, you know, when you're the guy in there, you, you have to be you. Um, and I felt like um, Teddy was himself, and Teddy won ball games, you know, and, uh, and Teddy was a great teammate. And I wish him all the best, except when he plays us. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Next one's from John Rusager. And Drew, you mentioned the evolution of the offense over these years, but how has it remained cutting edge through the trial and error process? I mean, you know, teams and, and players and offenses and systems get stale. How has this one stayed cutting edge? Well, um, we we just we we know we have to stay ahead of the curve. Um, I think each off season. You know, you're studying a lot of things um, about a lot of teams. Um, um, there's always a couple offenses that, you know, maybe had a lot of success with a certain scheme the year before. And so you're going to go watch those teams and say, hey, what, what made that so good? You know, and are there ways that we can incorporate that into what we're doing? And sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. But I think what we also know is that typically we're one of those offenses that people are studying, you know, both offenses and defenses. And so we have to continue to evolve so that you know, we can just you know, broaden the scope of, of what we're capable of doing and give defenses more things to worry about. Um, you know, there's always your bread and butter, but then again, there's always nuances that you want to build in there so that you know, people can't always anticipate your bread and butter. Next one's from Amy Just. Yeah, you played uh, five games in the pros against uh, Brady and the one that you had in college, as you talked about before. Is there a, a memory uh, that you shared with Tom either after one of those games that stands out to you now? Um, I mean, not really. I mean, other than, um, you know, when, when, I was, uh, when I was with the Chargers, what, I played against them twice, and now it's been three times. Is it three times with the Saints? Shoot, yeah. I forget. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a, uh, I know this, there's a, there's a mindset that you have to um, be near perfect. You know, nobody's ever going to be perfect, but you just have, there's such a great sense of urgency um, to maximize each and every opportunity because you know that's what he's doing on the other side of the ball. Next one's from Brett Martel. Did you, to, to any extent, do you see this game as one that showcases you and Tom as kind of like pioneers in terms of your approach to fitness and longevity? I mean, the league's been around 100 years, and this has never happened before. Obviously, it'll happen again because you're in the same division, but how do you see that? Um, well, that's, that's part of the evolution of the game, too, and, uh, and science and... and our, I think, everyone's approach, I think every NFL team's approach to um, how you're training, how you're recovering, how you're caring for players, you know, how we're training in the offseason. Um, you know, all those things have been an evolution as well. And I think we're armed and equipped with a lot more information now than we ever have been. And so the ability to incorporate those things into what we do from a training and recovery perspective, I think allows us to stay in our prime longer. You know, I've always used the term prolong your prime. At the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Father Time's going to get us at some point, but we're trying to beat him out right now. Next one's from Christopher Donalds. Hey, Drew. Not sure if you've covered this before elsewhere, but I was just curious for your take on the piped-in crowd noise in the Superdome and uh, how you think it compares to what the Dome can really get like on a game day. Um... I think what they're allowing is, is quite a bit less than what the Dome would be capable of getting up to. Um, you know, we, um, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's trying to provide some sort of, um, you know, maybe white noise or just a little bit of buzz, you know, like there would typically be um, in any stadium that you go to, whether you're on offense or defense. Um, so it's not so dead silent that you could hear a pin drop or you can hear every single word or signal or what have you that's being said. Last questions from Rod Walker. Hey, Drew, and yesterday, uh, Brett Favre kind of talked about how getting so close to a Super Bowl can take its toll on a quarterback. How much 
has that taken a toll on you the past two years, and how much has that fueled you to, you know, come back again? Hey, this time, man, I'm on borrowed time. I got nothing to lose. So um, I'm turning it loose and letting the chips fall where they may. I know that everything happens for a reason and that in most cases, failure is the best teacher. Um, that's the approach I've always taken. That's the approach this team has taken. And I feel like we've found a way to, to garner strength um, from each one of these moments from over the last few years. Um, and it's only made us better and it's only brought us cult, uh, closer to the, to the ultimate prize.